Family drama. We've all either seen it or been through it or we fear it. The last thing you want to do is cause more of it. But that's what can happen when you don't have an effective estate plan in place. Stress and grief of losing a loved one causes wear and tear on your family. And when it comes to dividing assets up, fights can break out. And I've seen those fights have a lasting effect on family relationships. I've seen siblings who don't talk to each other anymore just because they're so upset at what happened with the money after the parents died. But there is another option, you know, putting an estate plan in place and making sure that your family knows about your wishes ahead of time. By carefully considering this estate plan, you can make sure that your family's getting along after you're gone. So I have seven tips for you about preserving family harmony after you're gone. All right, tip number one, get an estate plan in place. I know that's kind of a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised that only 30% of all Americans actually have an estate plan in place. Can you believe it? So those other 70%, they can be headed to probate. And let me tell you, probate is a horrible, time-consuming process. And the longer a process takes, the more opportunities there are to, to start fighting between the kids. So I have a video called, Don't Let What Happened to Prince's Family Happen to You. I encourage you to watch that video after this one. Enough said. Okay, tip number two, timing is everything. Some of your children might need to receive their inheritance right away, but if you've left a mess, then that can take a long time to sort out and for your kids to receive their inheritance and they can get pretty upset through the process. So I encourage you to make sure every few years to make sure that your trust is properly funded, that everything's in, titled in the trust or the beneficiaries are properly updated because that process when you're gone of trying to get things into the trust can take a long time and that can make people upset. Okay, tip number three. I think this one's one of the most important ones. Plan for where your family is actually at, not where you want them to be. So what do I mean by this? Well, I talk with a lot of families who they know that their kids don't really get along, but they figure, hey, if I name my kids as co-trustees, then they'll have to get along. Aren't I clever? I figured this out. Please don't do this. If there are siblings who fight while you're alive, they're basically on their best behavior while you're alive. And when you're gone, it's no holds barred. All bets are off, okay? So I suggest for these families that you name a private professional fiduciary or a bank to act as trustee. So then your kids can be united in getting mad at the private fiduciary instead of fighting with each other. I have a video on how to choose a successor trustee for your trust and I talk about all the different options. So you don't just have to name a family member or you know don't just name the oldest son just because you know you figure that he should be the most responsible person. Name the person who actually is most responsible and who is respected by the rest of the family or name a private professional fiduciary or a bank or trust company. Okay, tip number four, don't make any promises you can't keep in your estate plan. So one thing I've seen that really leads to fights is when you have one person, often part of a married couple, who might say to a family member, hey, I'm promising to give you this when I die, but it doesn't happen, all right? And I have two examples of this. In one example, there was a husband who promised his niece and nephew that they would get money from the trust upon his death, whether he's the first or second to die. And indeed, they actually wrote it into the trust. But in the trust, they said, you know, out of our cash assets, the niece and nephew get some money. But here's the thing. They never put their cash assets into the trust. They only put their house into the trust. The cash assets passed directly to the surviving spouse who needed that money. So nothing ended up going to the niece or nephew. And let me tell you, the niece and nephew were furious about this because there was a promise that wasn't being kept and they got mad at the surviving spouse and the kids because they figured that it was their fault. But no, no, no. It was actually the couple who didn't fund their trust properly. All right, here's my second example. So this was a wife who promised to give her siblings substantial cash gifts upon her death, whether she was the first or second to die. But the husband never agreed to this and they ended up not writing this into the trust. Well, when the wife died, the siblings got really upset because there's like they were like, where are our cash gifts, okay? So just don't make those promises. If you don't know that you can carry that out, 
don't make the promise or you just don't have to say anything to extended family members in the first place. It's not really their business. Or if you want to make a gift, make a gift now while you're alive just to make sure that that gift actually happens. Hey everyone, if you liked my mom's video, like and subscribe. Okay, so tip number five. I encourage you to be as equitable as you can for your children, but with some caveats. So as you know, all of our children have different needs, right? Some might be very wealthy, you know, in the, in the Bay Area, we have a lot of venture capitalists who have a ton of money. But then we also have some children who might be doing noble work as a teacher or a firefighter or a social worker, and they're just not making that much money. Or you might have a child who can't work at all. So how do you treat those kids equally? I know for my boys, they are so into being treated equally. If one of them gets a gift or gets some attention, the other one wants that as well. So however you can keep things equal, I encourage you to do so. If one child is receiving inheritance into a trust, then you might want to consider leaving trusts for the other children, all right? But they might be different types of trusts. If you have a child who has special needs, they can receive their inheritance into a special needs trust. But then if you have children who don't have special needs, they can receive their inheritance into dynasty trusts. And let's say one of those children isn't very good at managing money, then a professional can manage that person's dynasty trust. And then the third child is good at managing money and they can manage their own dynasty trust. So you see how that's set up. Each of them gets a trust to hold their inheritance, but different people are managing it and the trusts have different terms, but that's okay because everybody's getting their inheritance into a trust. People can feel a lot more equal and taken care of. If you need to leave more to one child, like for example, you have a child who has special needs and they're not gonna be able to work and support themselves for the rest of their lives. So they need more money than the child who can work and support themselves. Well, what you might wanna do is leave things equally to the children in the trust. But then let's say you have a big retirement account that you can leave just to the disabled child's special needs trust. So that's one way of leaving more to the disabled child where the trust still looks equal, okay? And I actually have a video that talks about leaving retirement accounts to children with special needs and, and the tax benefits that come from that after the SECURE Act was passed. Okay, so tip number six. This actually goes against the last tip. And the tip is don't try to be too equitable. So what do I mean by that? Well, I have some clients who really want each child to get the exact same dollar amount, you know, so they'll keep maybe a running list of gifts that they've made to the children or loans that they've made, and they want to make sure it all equalizes. But when you get too much into the weeds, if you forget to write one down, write down a loan or a gift, and then you die, then there could be a lot of fighting over, was that a loan? Was that a gift? Was that supposed to equalize the, the car that somebody received from someone else? I mean, we understand as children that our parents are, are setting us up for success in however we need to be. You know, I think about me and my brother, you know, he went to private school for kindergarten through 12th grade. I was in public school, cost a lot more for private school, but I don't begrudge him that. That's what was appropriate for him, where he was living, what he needed. And for me, public school was okay, except that it didn't have a symphony orchestra at the public school. I'm still a little mad about that, right? But that's okay, they spent more on him. But, you know, during your lifetime, you can do whatever you want. You can spend, you know, however you want, okay? So please don't feel like you need to equalize exactly, because that, I've seen that really lead to a lot of fights. So tip number seven. My final tip is to have a family meeting. I found it to be very helpful when you bring the kids together or whichever kids have the capacity to attend such a meeting and explain to them where things are going, how it's being divided up. If you have an unequal distribution, you can explain why so that they don't feel like you don't love them or you're not taking care of them, but they can understand your reasoning. And that actually I've seen leads to fewer fights on the back end after the parents are gone because the children understand what the parents are trying to accomplish and they can get on board even if they don't super duper agree with it okay i actually have a video just on these types of family meetings i love leading these types of family meetings and and i encourage many of my clients to do these so hopefully this video has given you some ideas on how to update your estate plan to make sure that everybody gets along 
when you're gone and there's no family drama. Hello everyone! If you liked my mom's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time!